Hello, my name is Daniel Ramirez, and this is my muzzle loader lab. The first thing I'm going to do is inventory the Shenandoah kit that was provided by SDI. To do this, I'm going to use this parts list. Once I've determined that we are not missing any parts, then I can get started with this project. The first step to complete this muzzle loader is to inlet the lock and trigger assembly. I will do this with the scrapers and the inlet in black provided by SDI. The first thing we're going to do is inlet the, the lock assembly using the inlet in black. I'll apply some of the inlet in black on all the high points, spreading it out evenly. I will then align the hole in the front and press softly so the inlet in black may imprint the material that needs to be removed, like so. Now using a scraper, I will remove that material straight down. Now that I have removed the material that was preventing the lock from fully seating on the recess. I will trace around the lock with the pencil. I will remove the material I trace around so the lock may seat fully on the recess. Once I have removed that material, we're going to fine tune it with the little sandpaper. Now that I have removed all the excess material, I'll place the lock assembly, pressing firmly and ensure that it's flush with the stock surface. I will then test the lock. As you see here, the end is preventing the lock from cocking, so I will remove the end. I will smoothen it to give it that clearance. Now that I have rounded off the edge to allow the lock to fully close, I'll test it. And it's good. I'll then turn it upside down. So I can inlet the trigger assembly. I'll press firmly. And I'll remove the material that's been imprinted with the inlet in black. All right, now that we have <coughs> removed some of the material that was preventing it from fully seating, we will test the trigger with the lock. Now that I have inlet the trigger assembly, I will inlet the barrel. I'll put inlet in black all over the tang, all the contact areas, and the lower portion of the barrel. Now that I have applied a coat of inlet in black on the lower portion of the barrel, I will seat it into position, press firmly, so 
so we can imprint on the high points. I will then start removing all the imprints from the inlet in black. All right, now put the barrel on. This time we're going to put a line down the edge of the stock right beside the barrel. And we're going to remove the inside of the of the pencil line, lining it up so the, we remove the material that's pressing on the barrel. We don't want the barrel to expand the wood. We want it to not uh, be too much pressure on there. All right. Now that we got uh, all our inletting done, we're gonna put it together and test it. Test it. And that works. And that completes the inletting. I will now be shaping the stock. Now I'm going to true the butt plate so it will be contour with the butt stock. All right, so now I turn it around and I'm going to true this side to make a contour with the top of the buttstock. By leveling out, we'll be able to apply the inlet in black and it will give us a good reference of where we need to remove the material so it can uh, sink in. All right, now we're going to Outline the butt plate, making sure there's even amount of material on both sides. And using the pencil, outline butt plate. And the one. I will then apply some inlet in black on the surface of the butt plate. So now that I have uh, applied some inlet in black, I will find my guideline. Apply pressure I'm using the mallet. All right, now that I have applied the end in black, I will use my palm chisel, scorch the inside, and we'll do that all the way down and then remove all the area on the inside of the inlet in black. All right, now that I have cut off the recess for the butt plate, 
to settle in, I will install the butt plate. I'll be using the center pump. Tap in. And get it right in the middle. All right, now I will drill out the holes. side hole making sure I go on that angle just the way it's going to go into the butt plate Now we'll install the bottom plate and we'll get to shaping the wood. Alright, I'll now shave off some of the edge from the bottom plate. Now we'll go try it. So I will use this Indian stone to remove the burrs on the brass. All right, that fits pretty good. Then we use that center punch, mark the holes. And we'll drill out the holes. All right. Now we're going to shave down these burrs when we shape the stock they're still a little sharp. I will now shape the stock using this plain scraper here. All right, now I will smooth out the birds right here in the edge and finish uh, shaping it off with this file here. Now that I have set up the drill press to drill the pilot hole in the thimble, I'll first make sure it is leveled. Once I've determined it to be leveled, I will start the drilling. Pilot hole, I'll finish it off with the one eighth drill bit. All right, now that I have tapped the thumble hole, I'm going to countersink. The screw hole on this side. Alright, so it looks like I might have to do some more countersinking. It's still protruding a little bit. I want it to protrude because the barrel has to rest on that. Alright, I'll now drill the hole for the front thimble. First, I'll make sure it is aligned with this lever. And it looks good. 
Now verify that it's right on that little circle I've drawn with the pencil. And it's good. So now I'll begin drilling. Now we'll drill out the one eighth hole. All right, this is the one eighth bit. We'll finish in the pilot hole. And now I'll countersink the hole. The screw does a, a tapping on the wood. And the front thimble came already uh, tapped, so I don't have to do uh, tapping on the front thimble. All right, now that I have countersinked the hole, I will install the front thimble. All right, here we have it. So, front, no protrusion, excellent. All right, I'll now be installing these um, barrel tenants. Before I do so, I have to clean them up. Uh, I'm going to punch it in softly. Yeah. Okay. The same to the next one. Install in the barrel and drill the holes. All right, now that I have installed the barrel back in the stock, I'm going to draw a line using this pencil on the side of the barrel all the way across. All right, so. <clears throat> now that I have the tenants installed and that line drawn with the pencil, I'm going to measure the distance from that line to the center of the tenant. And that measures in at 0.58. And that one measures about the same. So. Now that we know the distance, we want to install it and measure it. This way I've drawn a line on the barrel going up so I know where the tenon is. So, and, and that is about right there. And so we're going to be putting our hole. And I have done this one. That's where I have that hole. All right, now that I have marked the, where I'm going to be drilling, I'll take it over to the press, the drill press, and start drilling our holes. I have set up the for the drilling of the tenant right above the hole and now start the drilling procedure all right now i'm going to drill out the back tenant hole Alright, 
check it out. All right, now that I have drilled out the holes on the tenants, I will drill, actually I will first mark where I'm going to drill. See, I've already done so. So now I will drill out those two holes on the drill press. Uh, so before I drill out the holes, I'm going ahead and use the center punch to mark the holes that way the drill bit doesn't run since it's a uh, kind of like an angle all right that should do it place it into position making sure it's even to lightly tap as there's not much material on this and now I'll take it over to the drill press and drill those out Screw it together. All right, so now that I've drilled out the holes, I'm going to countersink where the screw heads go in. And we're going to install them. Well, and I use this cutting wheel on this Dremel to remove the protruding sides of the screw so the barrel may rest on there. Alright, now that I uh, shaved off most of it, I'm going to tune it up with some sandpaper. Let's try to get the burrs off. Oh, that's what we did. All right, the last step to the drilling procedure is drilling out the trigger uh, rear screw hole. All right, that completes the drilling procedure. All right, now that I have shaped the stock. I will finish uh, shaping the, the breech area so it's flush with the barrel. All right, that looks good. I will now start the sanding. <clears throat> I'm going to start with 400 after I've uh, removed all the hairline scratches off of the wood, it'll be ready for staining. All right, now that I have touched it up with the 400 grit, I'll make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no visible scratches. Anything that I miss, I'll take the piece of 400 grit and just get into the little hard to reach areas with the blocks. Get in the middle. Make sure it's nice and smooth finish before I go to uh, stain the wood. All right, so now that I'm done shaping and sanding the wood, I noticed that the washers here were preventing the, the bolt 
screw from going um, all the way in. So it'll barely catch on it. So what I'm going to be doing is let me use a um, Forstner bit to um, screw out the little cavity where the washer will go in and uh, take up that empty space. I have uh, outlined where I need to cut. I lined it up and now I will start drilling. screws and the protrusion is right on point flush with the lock assembly surface now I'm going to stain the wood using this cloth here dip it in the stain and make sure we get a nice even coat all the way around all right, now that I've stained the wood, I'm going to leave it for 24 hours. And I'll come back and uh, see if it needs another coat. If not, we'll uh, oil the wood and put everything back together. All right, now that I have uh, allowed it to dry for a day, I'm going to run this uh, steel wool through it softly. You don't want to sand it too much. Now with this um, cloth, I'll wipe off all the, the residue and anything that the steel wool might have loosened up. I'll go ahead and apply some true oil with my hands. Just a little bit of my hands. Now that I have plugged the bore, I'm going to crown the muzzle by chamfering off the edges, ensuring it leaves a smooth, burr-free edge. And that's good. Now I will be placing some of this lapid compound. on the spiral lap. All right, that should be good. Now at medium speed. And let the um, lapping compound smoothen out the inside diameter of the muzzle. I'll right, we'll check it again. <clears throat> All right, to test, we're going to use a cotton swab and run it around the outside diameter of the edge and the inside of the muzzle. If any cotton has snagged up, then there's small burrs remaining and we need to do some further crowning or uh, lapping. I will now be bluing the barrel. Using this 400 grit, I have cleaned up the barrel, ensuring we remove all the rust or any dirt left behind. I've also removed the scratches around the barrel tank that was caused by the file when shaping the wood. I'll now use this uh, denatured alcohol to clean up any of the material that was lifted by the sandpaper. I'll then wipe it down, turn it around, and repeat the process on the other side. All right, now that I'm done wiping it down with the denatured alcohol, I'll clean it with this cold water. I'll now dry off the water 
Uh, now that I'm assured it's dry of water, I will apply the bloom solution. I'll now leave it for 45 seconds and then rinse it with the water. I'll now dry it with a towel, inspect it. If there's any areas we miss, we'll go back and touch it up. All right, looks good. And that completes the barrel bloom. Nice and even blue all around. Now that I have fully assembled my Shenandoah muzzle loader, I will perform the dry fire test. I'll start off by going to the half cock position and I'll press the trigger. The hammer should not fall. This is a safe position. I will remain in the half cock position and slightly push the hammer forward. The hammer should not fall. I'll remain in the half cock position and depress the set trigger. The Again, the hammer should not fall. Then I'll go to the full cock position and depress the front trigger. The hammer should fall. <coughs> I'll go to the full cock position and depress the front trigger. The hammer with uh, approximately four pounds should fall. Then I'll go to the full cock position and with the, your, my thumb slightly push the hammer forward. The hammer should not fall. I'll remain in the full cock position and press the rear set trigger and slightly push the hammer forward. The hammer should not fall. With the set trigger in place Fire, <clears throat> I will fire the front trigger. The hammer should be one to two pounds. And I successfully uh, performed the dry fire procedures. I will now go out and test fire it. For the ball into the barrel. I'm going to be shooting at this soda bottle right here. I will now load a percussion cap on the nipple. Set trigger, fully cock, aim, 